renal function test. The kidney are pair of bean-shaped organs located at the posterior wall of the abdomen, as you can see in this image. The kidney made up from a functioning unit called the nephrons. In addition to the tubules and glomerulus, all of these makes the nephron. This is a diagram that shows the component of a nephron. Here is the glomerular, as you can see, and these are the tubules, the proximal convoluted, the distal convoluted, and the collecting duct in addition to the loop of Hindley. So, why do we test renal function? We test renal function to assess the functional capacity of the kidney, early detection of possible renal impairment, severity and progression of the impairment, monitor response to treatment, and monitor the safe and effective use of drugs which are excreted in the urine. When should we assess renal function? We should assess renal function for patient older age, for family history of chronic kidney disease, for decreased renal mass, for low birth weight, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, autoimmune, systemic infection, urinary tract, nephrolithiasis, obstruction of lower urinary tract, and the drug toxicity. What to examine? Renal function tests are divided into the following. Urine analysis, blood examination, glomerular function test, and tubular function test. So let's begin with the urine analysis. It is an extremely viable that urine examination is the most easily performed test for the evaluation of renal function. It includes physical uh, or microscopical examination, in addition to chemical examination and microscopical examination of the sediment. The microscopical examination is just the looking of the urine, starting from the color. It is usually normal pale yellow in color due to the pigment, the urochrome, urobinin, and uroerythrin. The cloudiness may be caused by excessive cellular material or protein crystallization, or may be due to precipitation of solid upon standing at home temperature on the ref or uh, putting the, uh, the sample in the refrigerator before doing the analysis. If the sample contains many red blood cells, it would be cloudy as well as red. These are the types of color that you may see in any urine uh, complaining from a disease condition. The blue-green color for the urine could indicate a problem with the methylene blue, with the pseudominus, or with the riboflavin. The pink, orange, red could be related to hemoglobin, myoglobin, phenolephthalein, porphyrin, and rifamycin. The red, brown, black also could be due to hemoglobin, uh, myoglobin, red blood cell, uh, hemogenesthetic acid, aldopa, melanin, and methyl dopa. So the color of your, the urine depends upon it is constituent, and the urine may contain these compounds that reflecting on the color of the urine. Second, macroscopical examination is the volume. Usually the normal range is from one to two and a half liter per day. So if it is less than one, it is uh, oligoluria, where it reaches to less than 400 milliliter per day. This is seen in acute glomerular nephritis and renal failure. If it is higher than two and a half, it is a polyuria. Uh, this can be seen in water ingestion, diabetes mellitus, and insipidus. And sometimes there is anuria when the amount and volume of the urine is less than 100 milliliter per day. And this you can only see it with renal shutdown. Measurement of uh, specific gravity through using urinometer or 
refractometer. We measure the urine density, which reflects the ability of the kidney to concentrate or dilute the urine relative to the plasma from which it is filtered. So it's usually between 1 to 1.04. If the serum gravity is 1.001, then the osmolality is 100. If it is 1.040, then the osmolality is 1,400. So the normal osmolality is between 100 to 1,400 mOs per kilogram. Increase in specific gravity are seen in low water intake, in diabetes mellitus, albuminuria, and acute nephritis. Decrease in the specific gravity could be related to absence of the antidiuretic hormone and renal tubular damage. Iosinuria persists production of fixed low specific gravity urine where it's isomolar with plasma despite variation in water intake. So there is the disease, this type of disorders does not concern with the amount uh, of the uh, water intake. So whether you are taking the sufficient amount or you are taking lower or you are taking higher than the usual amount of the water. In the end, you will not get uh, any uh, any specific gravity within the normal range. The pH, also one of the factors that can be measured uh, to test the renal function test. It ranges from 4.5 to 8. Normally, uh, it's slightly acidic, uh, between 6 and 6.5. So after meal, it becomes alkaline. On exposure to the atmosphere, urea in the urine could split, causing the ammonia to be released, and this will convert the pH into alkaline reactions. So we finished with the macroscopical exam uh, test. Now we will test the urine microscopically. A sample of well-mixed urine, usually 10 to 15 milliliter, is centrifuged in a test tube after relatively low speed between 2,000 and 3,000 RPM for about 5 to 10 minutes, which produce a concentration of sediment, cellular matter, at the bottom of the tube. A drop of sediment is poured into a glass slide and a thin slice of glass, it's a cover slip, is a place over it. The sediment is first examined under low power to identify the presence of any crystal, cast, squamous cells, and other large objects like castes. Are plots of material which came from individual tubules? The numbers of casts seen are usually reported as number of each type found per low power field. For an example, 5 to 10 high lean cast per liter cast low power field. This is the way that result should be written when you are examining the urine under the microscope. You depend on the power you are using, whether it is low power field or middle power or high power field. Then examination is carried out at a high power to identify crystal cells and bacteria. The various types of cells are usually described as the number of each type found per average high power field. For example, 1 to 5 white blood cell high power field. So if you see at the beginning we said crystal or cast per low power field. But now we are saying white blood cell. This means that we are getting more specific to the type of crystal or cast that has been seen with the lower power field. Epithelial cells and one to two white blood cell or pus cell is normally seen. If 
more leukocytes per each high power field appear in non-contaminated urine and I certainly highlighted the non-contaminated urine. The specimen is probably abnormal showing pyuria. Leukocytes have looped nuclei in the granular cytoplasm. Usually the white blood cells are granular sites. White cell from the vagina in the presence of vaginal and cervical infection or external urethral mitos in men and women may be contaminated by urine. So it's so important to be 100% sure that the urine is collected in a highly hygiene state and it is transferred without any contamination. Presence of granular casts, red blood cell, bacteria, glucose, albumin, ketone body, all of these. If you only see one, if you just see one, it is abnormal, even if it is only one. Hematuria is the presence of abnormal number of red cells in urine due to any of several possible causes. It could be related to glomerular damage, kidney trauma, or urinary tract infection, or nephrotoxin. Red blood cells may stick together and form red blood cells. Cast. Such a cast are indicative of glomerular nephritis with leakage of red blood cells from the glomerular or severe tubular damage. White blood cell casts are most typical for acute pyelonephritis, but also they may be present with glomerular nephritis. Their presence indicates inflammation of the kidney. These are some pictures of the type of crystals and casts that can be seen in uh, urine sample. Uh, <coughs> These are red blood cell, white blood cell, and urinary cast in form of hyaline cast or erythrocyte cast, leukocyte and granulocyte casts. Crystal, tyrosine crystal with congenital tyrosinosis. Tyrosine crystal with congenital uh, Tyrosinosis. Using crystal in patients with severe liver disease or with muscle syrup urine disease. You can see from the pictures that there is some type of crystals that can be identified from the general shape of the crystal. The calcium oxalate crystal, the uric acid crystal, the triple phosphate crystal, and the cysteine crystals. Each one of these crystals has its own feature that can uh, recognize them from other types of crystals. So, the other test that can be performed with the renal function test is the blood examination, done to measure substances in the blood that are normally excreted by the kidney. So. For example, the hyporic acid. The hyporic acid is, uh, is a type of uh, compound that usually fully excreted through the urine. So any amount, even a tiny amount of its presence in the, in the blood, it means there is a defect in the kidney. So it's, as a marker of renal function, creatinine, uric acid, and ilcatrolite, are also done for routine analysis. First of these compounds that are usually fully excreted through the kidney is the creatinine. Creatinine is the breaking down product uh, of phosphate, creatinine phosphate in the muscle, and is usually produced at a fairly constant rate by the body, depending also on the muscle mass. Creatinine is filtered but not reabsorbed. Normal range is from 0.8 to 1.3 mg per deciliter in men, 0.6 to 1 in women. Not increased above the normal until the glomerular filtration rate is lower than 50 ml 
pair mint. The method most widely used for serum creatinine are based on the Java reaction. This reaction occurs between the creatinine and the uh, picrate ion, uh, which is the major reagent present in the kit, uh, in an alkaline medium. So a red, red orange uh, solution developed, which is red uh, colorimetric at 520 nanometer. Uh, this is the way where you can test for the presence of creatinine in the blood. So no matter what uh, concentration you get in the blood, it means there is abnormal uh, kidney function because only when the, the glomerular filtration rate is lower than 50 milliliter, it is the only way where the creatinine level will be increased in the, uh, in the blood. So, what are the causes for increase on serum creatinine? It could be renal, impaired renal function, very high protein diet, uh, anabolic steroid user, uh, very large uh, muscular mass, uh, bodybuilder, gigantism, acromegaly, athletes, drugs like cimetidine, uh, triamethylene, emulerate, all of these causes may be related to the increase in the serum creatinine. So, blood urea is another uh, is another blood marker that can be tested for a kidney function, but not like creatinine. Urea is major nit nitrogenous end product of protein and amino acid. I think you should have uh, had this with your protein uh, lectures. So it is the end product of protein. Urea is filtered freely by the glomerular. Many renal diseases with various glomerular, tubular, interstitial, or vascular damage can cause an increase in the plasma urea concentration. Uh, the normal range is between 10 to 40 mg per deciliter for a healthy adult. Plasma concentration also tend to be slightly higher in male, more than female, with their muscular mass. High protein diet causes significant increase in plasma urea concentration and urinary excretion. So measurement of plasma creatinine provides more accurate assessment than urea. Why is that? Uh, this is because there are many non-renal factors that can affect urea level. Urea involvement uh, in the body is not only re restricted to the kidney. No, the liver is responsible for the formation and secretion, for the detoxification of ammonia into the urea and then to the transport of urea to the kidney. So any change in urea level may be related either to liver or to the kidney. So it is not specific to the kidney as the creatinine. Another you know, factor uh, that affects uh, urea level could be related to mild dehydration, high protein diet, increased protein catabolism, reabsorption of the blood, or treatment with cortisol. Uh, status associated with elevated level of urea in the blood are referred to as urea or isotene. Causes of urea elevation in plasma is, could be related to pre-renal, renal, or post-renal causes. Blood urea is normally doubled when the glomerular filtration is halved. Parallel determination of urea and creatinine is performed to differentiate between pre-renal and post-renal isotemia. The pre-renal isotemia leads to increased urea level, while the creatinine value remains within the normal reference range. In post-renal isotemia, both of them, urea and creatinine, are uh, increased. Enzymatic pertinate method is the way or the principal experiment that we can use to estimate urea level. Serum uric acid is another biomarker that can be used for diagnosis or estimation of uh, kidney condition. Uric acid is the major product of the catabolism of purine nucleoside adenosine and guanosine. 
It is derived from catabolism of dietary nucleic acid and from degradation of endogenous nucleic acid. Overproduction of uric acid may result from increased synthesis of pure urea precursor. In human, approximately 75% of uric acid is secreted is lost in the urine. Most of the remainder is secreted into the gastrointestinal tract. Hyperuricemia is defined by serum or plasma uric acid concentration higher than 7 mg per dc. Glomerular function test is the best measure of glomerular function. Normal glomerular filtration rate is approximately 125 ml per minute. When glomerular filtration decreases to 30% of normal, there will be moderate renal insufficiency. So the patient remains asymptomatic. There is no clinical feature yet. With only biochemical evidence of a decline in glomerular filtration rate if the patient is making routine investigation. As the glomerular filtration rate decreases further, Several renal insufficiency characterized by profound clinical manifestation of urinemia and biochemical abnormalities like acidemia, volume overload, neurological, cardiac, and respiratory manifestation. So, when the glomerular is 5% to 10% of the normal, it means the end stage of a renal disease. Inoline clearance and creatinine clearance are used to measure the glomerular filtration rate. Creatinine clearance is a simple, inexpensive, bedside estimation of glomerular filtration rate. Normal uh, renals is between 120 is between 100 to 120 ml per minute. Reserve mild is between 60 to 100. Renal impairment is between 40 to 60, and sufficiency is between 25 to 40. The renal failure is less than 25, and in the end, it will become less than 10 uh, milliliter per minute. Tubular function tests can be performed through measuring the urine concentration test, the ability of the kidney to concentrate urine. Usually carried out readily with only minor inconvenience to the patient, this test requires water deprivation for 40 hours. So your patient should be a very healthy patient so you can perform this type of test. It's not easy to ask the patient to stay out of water or any other type of fluid for 14 hours. A specific gravity of more than 1.02 indicates normal concentration power, while specific gravity of 100.008 to 100.010 is isotonic with the plasma and indicate no work done by the kidney. The test should not be performed on a dehydrated patient. So important to notice these tips. Vasopressin test is another test for the measurement of the ability of the kidney to perform uh, the concentration process. More patient friendly than the water deprivation test, the subject has nothing to drink after 6 p.m. at uh, 8 p.m. 5 units of vasopressin is injected subcutaneously. Uh, all urine samples are collected separately until 9 a.m., so for one hour. So uh, we start by stop drinking at 6 p.m. Uh, then after two hours at 8 p.m., we ask the patient to take 5 units of vasopressin and this, uh, after this, we ask the patient to collect the urine from until 9 a.m. the next morning. I'll repeat this 
and it's so important to know the procedure. 6 p.m. the patient will stop drinking. 8 p.m. he will take 5 units of vasopressin. From that time until 9 a.m., whatever amount of urine it should be collected separately. Satisfactory concentration is shown by at least one sample having a specific gravity of above 102 or an osmolality above 800 milliosmol per kilogram. Urine dilution after an overnight fast, the subject empties his bladder completely and is given 1000 milliliter of water to drink. Urine specimens are collected for the next four hours. The patient emptying bladder completely on each occasion. Normally, the patient will execute at least 700 milliliter of urine in these four hours and at least one specimen will have a specific gravity less than 1.004. Kidneys which are severely damaged cannot excrete uh, volume above 400 milliliter. The test should not be done if there is edema uh, or renal failure. Water intoxication may result. <laughs>